Thank you for your registration to this free lecture. We received over 2,000 interested doctors. And now uh, we're going to talk about uh, occurrence of semen remnants on reverse margin custom abutments design versus conventional custom abutments. This is the part of our research project, a clinical study, uh, which was presented in EAO this year. And indeed, I'm very happy to say thank you to my team, Paulus, Jonas, and Emil from Canada. Well, I think all of us agree agrees that semen remnants is a big problem. It's a risk for perimplantitis, and there are a lot of really a lot of data showing that semen remnants is not good for perimplant tissues. It can cause various amounts of perimplant inflammation. Not only papers show that, our own clinical experience shows that indeed you can have various problems. For example, here you can see a perimucositis, a big inflammation. And when we make an X-ray, it is obvious that there is semen remnants located below the tissues. What we did in this case, we just removed the restoration by drilling it occlusal surface. And then I cleaned the semen remnants and after cleaning, I put back the restoration and after a few weeks, we had complete resolvance, resolving of the problems. It does really confirm the fact that if semen remnants are present in the tissues, you can have inflammation and when semen remnants are removed, the inflammation is gone. So it's really cause and problem, problem and cause uh, relation. Of course, you know, you can have much more serious problems if semen remnants are not removed, like you can see it here, that huge bone loss in anterior, in, in anterior implant just because of poor semen remnant removal or poor uh, abutment design and for this patient it, sh it is much much more serious than for the patient we just saw a minute ago. Well what are our solutions? What we suggest how to avoid this? Many 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 solutions have been presented. First of all we do not use standard abutments for cementation intraorally Instead, we recommend to use individual abutments or go to retained restorations. So, as today our topic is cementation, so let's look a little bit about how should we use individual abutments to reduce semen remnants. And if I have a posterior case, so it is not a problem because I can clearly design, like you see it here, clearly supragingival margins, and I can remove semen remnants easily. But what about anterior case? Well, in anterior case, we cannot actually, you know, leave uh, supragingival margins like here, because you can see this supragingival margin, and of course, you know, for some patients, maybe it might be acceptable, you know, but for majority patients, you cannot leave supragingival margin like this, even if it, after some time, it really blends and it's really difficult to detect a, a cementation margin. So, for example, here, this is individual abutment, 
a very high supragingival margin, cemented crown, and you do not have semen remnants. But could we do it, for example, here? I don't think so. So there must be some solution which we could offer to our patients in case we need to cement. Well, of course, uh, I am, let's say, a proponent of scrutined restorations. That is, let's say, my first choice. But sometimes the angulation of the implant is so bad or there might be some other reasons when you are obliged to cement, when you need to cement. And as I said before, in posterior region, we do not have any problems with making supragingival margins, but in anterior case, we cannot do that. So here we face a dilemma. And dilemma is like this. Uh, all studies which our group has done and other groups as well show that if we want to remove semen remnants safely, we need to have supragingival margin. So supragingival margin is the only tool, the only, let's say, reliable tool to remove semen remnants but we cannot do, use those margins in anterior region because here we might, re, might remove semen remnants, but this is aesthetically unacceptable to have margins like this. What should we do? There is also data showing that residual cement can be on conventional custom abutments as well with a standard chamfered, uh, chamfer margin. So there might be some other solution we could really think about using. This is what is being suggested to use an individual abutment with reverse margin design. And what the reverse margin design is, that you see the margin and the end of the margin is raised a little bit up. So the abutment is milled like that, that you can have like, you know, the, the safeguard for the cement that it would not go below the cementation margin. This design was suggested by my friend and colleague, Dr. Emil Svoboda from Canada. And he just uh, in his design demonstrated that, for example, here, yeah, this is how the reverse margin looks like. You can see the end of the margin is rising up. And when the crown is cemented, cement goes down. But this margin here does not allow cement to go below the cementation margin into the tissues. And then you can easily remove cement excess. And this is how to say the reverse margin design in action. Now, does this really, is it really proved clinically? Because in order, you know, anything can really sound, be, uh, sound good on paper on in, in vitro study. As you all know, uh, I am a proponent of clinical studies and all zero bone loss concepts, ideas are based on clinical studies. So that's why together with, with, with uh, our team, we have developed a clinical study and we wanted really to test, does this reverse margin really help to preclude semen remnants going below the cementation margin? Because I think, let, let's say, let's have a hypothesis that if this margin is really working, maybe in those anterior cases, which I talked about, we can use this reverse margin, hide our cementation margin, just let's say one millimeter or a little bit less below the tissues. And still we would be sure that semen remnants can uh, will not go down in the tissues, they will rise up supra gingivally, 
and then we will be able to clean it with an explorer. So our goal was to evaluate the influence of reverse margin custom abutment on cement uh, excess extrusion below the crown and abutment cementation margin. And we have compared reverse margin design with chamfer design because all our standard, all our individual abutments traditionally are designed as their chamfers. So we wanted to see how these two different designs work. And here we had our clinical study. We were placing uh, bone level implants and implants uh, yield, and then uh, the same implant was restored with reverse margin abutment and then with chamfer design abutment. Uh, and we wanted to see on the same implant which abutment is really better to stop semen remnants going down below the cementation margin. This is important. We tested not how much semen remnants we are removing, but how much semen remnants can go below this cementation margin. Because if semen remnants stopping at the cementation margin, it means that uh, our uh, subgingival part is safe. We had this inclusion exclusion criteria, which are standard for the, for the all clinical trials. Uh, the only one thing that I really want to stress here is that uh, we used both design margins on the same implant. That was the idea to keep, you know, the conditions as similar as possible. So this means that, let's say, first random, randomly, one case was cemented with... Uh, let's say reverse margin, then the restoration was removed, then we put healing abutment back and the patient uh, returned later because the tissues uh, must be the same in the same condition as before. And then after one week, we repeated the cementation only with different design margin. Margins were located about equally or up to one millimeter submucosally uh, because it is uh, difficult really to control all the position of the margin uh, equally. So we, before cementation, we measured how deep the margin is positioned. Uh, uh, we used dual QRS and relics uh, U200 for the cementation and this is how you see the uh, semen remnants uh, which were removed uh, and then we were removing the restorations for inspection. For example, here you can see a re reverse margin abutment and clearly it is visible in this particular case that all semen remnants do really go above the Above the, uh, above the margin. So they go supragingivally. They do not go below, below the tissues. Uh, and that would really see that maybe this margin is really, is really important and can produce less semen remnants. It is also very nicely visible here on an X-ray. So you see these places is really the uh, cement remnants which were going up when we cemented restoration on reverse margin. But of course, you know, uh, we had uh, 10 cementations in one hand, 10 cementations on the other hand, and only when we removed everything and we measured, then we were able to arrive with some calculations. How did we measure? Uh, the restoration and the abutment were mounted on a special uh, device where we photographed them and then we calculated 
we saw we see do did the semen remnants were below the cementation margin or not so for example here we can clearly see that this is uh, this is the abutment this is the restoration this is cementation margin and in this case only small amount of semen remnant is below here is a little bit bigger in some cases we calculated that there was no semen remnants below the cementation margin so that was all uh, what was all the study about well what were the results results really showed two things first of all indeed when we compared uh, test group and test group was our reverse margin abutment we had significantly less uh, cases where cement was going below the cementation margin while in control group where we used chamfer margin a normal margin without any reverse uh, reverse segment we had almost half of the cases where the semen remnants were going below the cementation margin. And this, uh, this significance uh, was statistically, difference was statistically significant. So indeed, according to these results, we can say that the reverse margin does really reduce the chances that semen remnants would go below our cementation margin into the tissues. Also, it is interesting to see that, uh, uh, for example, the difference between percentage uh, of reverse margin and ch uh, chamfer margin. And you see that uh, one millimeter below the gingival line, almost 60 cases of chamfer margin uh, uh, abutments had semen remnants below the uh, cementation line, while in reverse margin only 20%. Indeed, uh, it is obvious that reverse margin uh, helps us to have less cement remnants below the cementation line. However, a conclusion would be like this, that the reverse margin custom zirconia abutments resulted in significantly less cement rests occurrence below the cementation margins compared to conventional zirconia custom abutments. But, Still, in some cases, you had semen remnants below the cementation line. So I go back here to this slide. In the test group, we still had 17.5% of the cases where, despite the reverse margin, you had semen remnants below the cementation line. So but we would like to have zero. Yeah, we cannot afford just even one millimeter below the cementation line. So here is, uh, I would say that uh, the conclusions would be duplicate. So one of them is of course that this margin, uh, reverse margin is more effective than chamfer margin, however, not effective, effective enough to preclude completely uh, semen remnants going below the cementation line. That's one. Another issue is, of course, that we had only 10 specimens. It means that if we would increase the, if we would increase the sample size, we would probably had different results. And another uh, issue was here that we actually did not remove uh, semen remnants below the gingival line. Our, let's say, goal was to see uh, biodynamics, to see uh, will the semen go below the cementation line. 
and maybe if we would be actively removing the the cement maybe we would have different results anyway even with this reverse margin we still are in this uh, process that still screw retained restorations in my opinion are uh, cementless so you don't have you do not have cement remnants uh, when you do screw retained restoration that still uh, remains my first choice and if I need to cement in any case in anterior region then I still probably will be thinking about having 0 0.5 millimeter uh, margin anteriorly but then probably we could think about using reverse margin uh, design because we already have seen that the reverse margin is better than chamfer margin so you really combine uh, both things first of all screw retain is better but if you need to cement then you might be thinking of using this kind of of the margin well of course we are now a completely different reality and uh, uh, if you would like to learn more uh, about not only reverse margin but also about all the all these things which we have discussed in zero bone loss concepts there is a online course uh, which I'm doing uh, how to maintain crestal bone stability around implants so it's not only uh, not only the uh, restorative part it's also a surgical part 16 hours of education instant access and no limitation of viewing and indeed it's really interactive you can have ask questions you can really download different papers and it looks like a movie so all the course is really really nice another big issue which we really have implicated in the course that all clinical papers which are uh, done here on this subject by our team are presented during the course so you just as you see it here in the video just click on the name and the paper on which the uh, the the course is based you can see it here you can download it and you can read it by yourself which is the which is the primary data now we live in different reality and uh, as i said the traveling is precluded uh, i don't really know where i'm going to talk about where i'm going to make another course because nothing is planned i used to have my two days zero bone loss concept course in vilnius with the cost of this now generally normal cost of online course is uh, 899 euros so for you as this is let's say the first uh, newsletter i'm sending out i'm giving a special 20 percent discount so you can get all the data all the course uh, much cheaper uh, in order to do that you must type reverse margin as a discount discount code in when you are registering for your course so you just type reverse margin here press apply code and then you further go for the registration and indeed you can enjoy all the benefits of online course now so final take home messages wrapping up before we say uh, goodbye and see you next time with a small short videos reverse margin abutments with this pointing the margins of the line pointing upwards it is really have better chances to preclude semen remnants going 
below the cementation line. However, it does not really you give you a 100% chance that you're going to stop seven remnants. Okay, with this, I want to thank you and I hope you see online. If you have any questions regarding this small presentation, just uh, write me an email, education at thomaslinkavichus.com and see you online.